time sitting in the assembly was a Brahmin Swede called Kapatika. Kapatika. Oh. Young, shaven, headed, 16 years old. He was a master of the three Vedas with their vocabularies, liturgy, phonology, and etymology. And the histories as a fifth, and the histories as a fifth, fifth skilled in philology, what? <coughs> I think that's it. Phil, skilled in philology and grammar, he was fully versed in natural philosophy and in the monks of a great man, and in the marks of a great man. While the very senior Brahmins were conversing with the Blessed One, he repeatedly broke in and interrupted their talk. Then the Blessed One rebuked the Brahmin student, Kapitika, thus, the Honorable Bharadwaja. Baravaja should have break in and interrupt the talk of the very senior Brahmins while they are conversing. He should wait until the talk is finished. When this was said, the Brahmin Tanki, Tanki, Tanki. said to the Blessed One, Master Gautama should not rebuke the Brahmin student, Kapitika. This Brahmin student is very learned. He has a good delivery, he is wise. He can well take part in this discussion with Master Gautama. Then the Blessed One thought, surely since the Brahmins honor him thus, the Brahmin student, Kapitika, must be accomplished in the scriptures of the three Vedas. <coughs> Vedas. Then the Brahmin student, Kapitika, thought, when the ascetic Gautama catches my eye, I shall ask him a question. Then, knowing with his own mind the thought of the Brahmin student Kapitika's mind, the Blessed One turned his eye towards him. Then the Brahmin student Kapitika thought, the ascetic Gautama has turned toward me. Suppose I ask him a question. Then he said to the Blessed One, Master Gautama, in regard to the ancient Brahmin hymns that have come down through oral transmission, preserved in the collections, the Brahmins come to the definite conclusion only this is true. Anything else is wrong. What does Master Gautama say about this? How then, uh, Bahara Bahara. Bahara. <laughs> Among the Brahmins, is there even a single Brahmin who says less? I know this. I see this. Only this is true. Anything else is wrong. No, Master Gautama. How then, Prada Veja Baja? Bharadwaja. Arabaja. Yeah. Among the Brahmins, is there even a single teacher or a single teacher, teacher's teacher, back to the seventh generation of teachers who says thus, I know this, I see this, only this is true, anything else is wrong. No, Master Gautama. How then, Brahma, Vibhaja, the ancient Brahmin seers, the creators of the hymns, the composers of the hymns, whose ancient hymns that were formerly chanted, uttered, and compiled, the Brahmins nowadays still chant and repeat, repeating what was spoken and reciting what was recited. That is, oh good. <laughs> oh wow, good. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and even <laughs> these ancient Brahmin seers say thus. We know this, we see this, only this is true, anything else is wrong. No, Master Gautama. So, Radha Javaja, it seems that among the Brahmins, there is not even a single Brahmin who says thus. I know this, I see this, only this is true, anything else is wrong. And among the Brahmins, there is not even a single teacher or a single teacher's teacher, back to the seventh generation of teachers, who says this. I know this, I see this, only this is true, anything else is wrong. And the ancient Brahmin seers, the creators of the hymns, the composers of the hymns, even these ancient Brahmin seers did not say thus. We know this, we see this, only this is true, anything else is wrong. Suppose there were a file of blind men, each in touch with the next. The first one does not see, the middle one does not see, and the last one does not see. So too, that name, in regard to their statement, the Brahmins seem to be like a file of blind men. The first one does not see, the middle one does not see, and the last one does not see. What do you think, Radha Baja? 
that being so, does not the faith of the Brahmins turn out to be groundless? The Brahmins honor this not only out of faith, Master Gautama, they also honor it as oral tradition. Aradhavaja, first you took your stand on faith, now you speak of oral tradition. There are five things, Prarabhavaja, that may turn out in two different ways here and now. What five? Faith, approval, or tradition, reason, cogitation, and acceptance of a view as a result of pondering it. These five things may turn out in two different ways here and now. Now something may be fully accepted out of faith, yet it may be empty, hollow, and false. But something else may not be fully accepted out of faith, yet it may be factual, true, and unmistaken. Again, something may be fully approved of, well transmitted, well cogitated, well pondered, yet it may be empty, hollow, and false. But anything else may not be well pondered, yet it may be factual, true, and unmistaken. Under these conditions, it is not proper for a wise man who preserves truth to come to the definite conclusion only this is true, anything else is wrong. But, Master Gahan, in what way is there to preserve, it? in what way is there the preservation of truth? How does one preserve truth? We ask Master Gottman about the preservation of truth. If a person has faith, Bahavaja, he preserves truth when he says, my faith, is, my faith is thus, but he does not yet come to the definite conclusion. Only this is true, anything else is wrong. And in this way, Bahavaja, there is a preservation of truth. In this way he preserves truth, and in this way he describes the preservation of truth. But as yet, there is no discovery of truth. If a person approves of something, if he receives an oral tradition, if he reaches a conclusion based on reasonable cognition, cognitation, cognition, if he accepts a view as a result of pondering it, he preserves truth when he says, the view I have accepted as a result of pondering it is thus, but he does not yet come to a definite conclusion. Only this is, only this is true. Anything else is wrong. In this way too, Bhagavada, there is a preservation of truth, and in this way he preserves truth in the way we describe the preservation of truth. But as yet, there is no discovery of truth. In that way, Master Gottman, there is only, there is the preservation of truth, and in the way one preserves truth, in the way one recognizes the preservation of truth, but in what way, Master Gottman, is there the discovery of truth? In what way does one discover truth? We ask Master Gottman about the discovery of truth. Here, Bhagavada, a monk may be living in dependence on some village or town. Then a householder or a householder's son goes to him and investigates him in regards to three kinds of states in regards to the states based on greed, in regards to the state based on hate, in regards to the state based on delusion. Are there, are there in this monk any states based on greed such that with his mind obsessed by those states, while not knowing he might say, I know, or while not seeing he might say, I see, or he might urge others to act in a way that would lead to their harm and suffering for a long time. As he investigates, he comes to know there is no such state based on greed in this monk. The bodily and verbal behavior of this monk is not those of one afflicted by greed. And the Dharma that he teaches is profound, hard to see and hard to understand, peaceful and sublime unattainable by mere reasoning, subtle to be experienced by the wise. This dharma cannot be easily taught by one affected by greed. When he has, when he has investigated him 
and he sees that he is purified from the state based on greed, he next investigates him in regards to the state based on hate. As they're, as they're in this monk, are there in this monk any states based on hate, such that his mind obsessed by those states? He might urge others to act in that way act in a way that may lead to their harm and suffering for a long time. As he investigates him, he comes to know there is no other su there is no such state based on hate in the monk. The body and verbal behavior of this monk are not those of one affected by hate, afflicted by hate. And the dharma that he teaches is profound. To be experienced by the wise, this dharma can easily be taught by one afflicted by, cannot easily be taught by one afflicted by hate. When he investigates him and he see, and has seen that he is purified from the state based, of, based on hate, he next investigates him in regards to the state based on delusion. Are there in this monk any states which are delusion? States based on delusion such that with his mind obsessed by those states, he might urge others to act in a way that would lead to their harm and their suffering for a long time. As he investigates him, he comes to know there is no such state based on delusion in this monk. The bodily and verbal behavior of this monk are not those of one afflicted by delusion. And the dharma that he teaches is profound. To be experienced by the wise, this dharma cannot easily be taught by one afflicted by delusion. When he has investigated him, as seen that he is purified from the state based on delusion, then he places faith in him. Fill with, filled with faith, he visits him and pray, pays respect to him. Having paid respect to him, he gives ear. When he gives ear, he hears the dharma. Having heard the Dharma, he memorizes it and examines the meaning of the teaching he has memorized. When he experiences their meaning, he accepts those teachings as a result and ponders them. When he has occupied those teachings, when he has accepted those teachings as a result of pondering them, desire springs up, and when desire has sprung up, he applies his will, having applied his will he applies his will. Having applied his will, he scrutinizes. Having scrutinized, he strives. Resulting, resulting, resolutely, resolutely striving, <coughs> he realizes with the body that the supreme truth and sees it in, by penetrating it with wisdom. In this way, Bahada, there is this, there is a discovery of truth. And in this way, one discovers truth. In this way, we describe the discovery of truth. But as yet, there is no final arrival at truth. In that way, Master Gottman, there is a discovery of truth in the way one discovers. In that way, Master Gottman, there is a discovery of truth. In that way, one discovers truth. And in that way, we recognize the discovery of truth. But in what way, Master Gottman, is there a final arrival at truth? And what does one finally arrive? And what does one finally arrive at truth? When we ask Master Gottman about the final arrival at truth, you want to try? The final arrival at truth, Bara Devaja, lies in the repetition development and cultivation of those same things. In this way, Bhara there is final arrival at truth. In this way, one finally arrives at truth. In this way, we describe the final arrival at truth. In this way, Master Gautama, there is the final arrival at truth. In that way, one finally arrives at truth. In that way, we recognize the final arrival at truth. But what, Mr. Gautama, is most helpful for the final arrival at truth? We ask Master Gautama about the thing most helpful for the final arrival at truth. Striving is most helpful for the final arrival at truth, Bharata Bhaja. 
If one does not strive, one will not finally arrive at truth. But because one strives, one does finally arrive at truth. That is why striving is most helpful for the final arrival at truth. But what, Master Gautama, is most helpful for striving? We asked Master Gautama about the things most helpful for striving. Scrutiny is most helpful for striving, Bharata Bhaja. If one does not scrutinize, one will not strive. But because one scrutinizes, one strives. That is why scrutiny is most helpful for striving. But what, Master Gautama, is most helpful for scrutiny? We asked Master Gautama about the things most helpful for scrutiny. Application of the will is most helpful for scrutiny, Bharata Bhaja. If one does not apply one's will, one will not scrutinize. But because one applies one's will, one scrutinizes. That is why application of the will is most helpful for scrutiny. But what, Master Gautama, is most helpful for application of the will? We asked Master Gautama about the things most helpful for application of the will. Desire is most helpful for application of the will, Dara Devaja. If one does not arouse desire, one will not apply one's will. But because one arouses desire, one applies one's will. That is why desire is most helpful for application of the will. But what, Master Gautama, is most helpful for desire? We asked Master Gautama about the things most helpful for desire. Accepting the teacher, teachings as a result of pondering them is most helpful for desire, Bharadavaja. If one does not accept the teachings as a result of pondering them, desire will not spring up. But because one accepts the teaching as a result of pondering them, desire springs up. That is why accepting the teachings as a result of pondering them is most helpful for desire. But what Master Gautama is most helpful for accepting the teachings as a result of pondering them? We ask Master Gautama about the most helpful for accepting the teachings as a result of pondering them. Examination of the meaning is most helpful for accepting the teachings as a result of pondering them, Aravajya. If one does not examine their meaning, one will not accept the teachings as a result of pondering them. But because one examines their meaning, one accepts the teachings as a result of pondering them. That is why examination of the meaning is most helpful for accepting the teachings as a result of pondering them. But what, Master Gautama, is most helpful for examination of the meaning? We asked Master Gautama about the things most helpful for examination of the meaning. Memorizing the teachings is most helpful for examining the meaning by the Bible. If one does not memorize a teaching, one will not examine its meaning. But because one memorizing a teaching, one examines its meaning. But what, Master Gautama, is the most helpful for memorizing the teaching? We asked Master Gautama about the things most helpful for memorizing the teachings. Hearing the Dharma is most helpful for memorizing the teachings, Bhara Devaja. If one does not hear the Dharma, one will not memorize the teachings. But because one hears the Dharma, one memorizes the teachings. That is why hearing the Dharma is most helpful for memorizing the teachings. But what Master Gautama is most helpful for hearing the Dharma? We asked Master Gautama about the things most helpful for hearing the Dharma. Giving ear is most helpful for hearing the Dharma, Baba Devaja. If one does not give ear, one will not hear the Dharma. But because one gives ear, one hears the Dharma. That is why giving ear is most helpful for hearing the Dharma. But what Master Gautama is most helpful for giving ear? We asked Master Gautama about the things most helpful for giving ear. Paying respect is most helpful for giving ear, Baba Devaja. If one does not pay respect, one will not give ear. But because one pays respect, one gives ear. That is why paying respect is most helpful for giving ear. But what Master Gautama is the most helpful for paying respect? We asked Master Gautama about the things most helpful for paying respect. Visiting is most helpful for paying respect, Bharadavaja. If one does not visit a teacher, one will not pay respect to him. But because one visits a teacher, one pays respect to him. That is why visiting is most helpful for paying respect. But what Master Gautama is most helpful for visiting? We asked Master Gautama about the things most helpful for visiting. Faith is most helpful for visiting, Bharata Bhaja. If faith in a teacher does not arise, one will not visit him. But because faith in a teacher arises, one visits him. That is why faith is most helpful for visiting. 
Yes, Master Gautama about the preservation of truth, and Master Gautama answered about the preservation of truth. We approve of and accept that answer, and so we are satisfied. We asked Master Gautama about the discovery of truth, and Master Gautama answered about the discovery of truth. We approve of and accept that answer, and so we are satisfied. We asked Master Gautama about the final arrival of truth, and Master Gautama answered about the final arrival of truth. That truth. <coughs> we approve of and accept that answer, and so we are satisfied. We asked Master Gautama about the thing most helpful for the final arrival at truth, and Master Gautama answered about the thing most helpful for the final arrival at truth. We approve of and accept that answer, and so we are satisfied. Whatever we ask Master Gautama about, that he has answered us. We approve of and accept that answer, and so we are satisfied. Formerly, Master Gautama, we used to think, who are these bald-headed ascetics, these dark menial offspring of the Lord's feet, that we, they would understand the Dharma? But Master Gautama has indeed inspired in me love for ascetics, confidence in ascetics, reverence for ascetics. Magnificent Master Gautama, magnificent Master Gautama. From today, let Master Gautama remember me as a lay follower who has gone to him for a refuge for life. Hmm? That's the end of the chapter. Trip? Chapter. Chapter, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Then we do our next chapter. Okay. Okay. Are there any critics come up? Really straightforward. I wish my brother would read this. <laughs> There's a lot of repetition. Is that because it was passed orally a lot? Because when you're passing something orally, you need to. Makes it easy to pass it orally. If they don't have something in front of them, they have to have it read, be spoken. When they were just going right through, you know, step by step, what was the one before desire? Was it was it the, the reading of the striving? Was it striving, and then after striving came the desire? And then not after striving, because of desire. Well, I guess it's, uh, so that's a good desire. To yeah, that, the desire to want yeah. to get on this path. Yeah, it's like uh, the uh, application of the will. Application of the will. Will. And then was the desire. Yeah. yeah. The, the desire to follow this path. Yes, yeah, I desire to path. follow this path. And Why, you know, that, that, that's something that just must arise within someone. Well, yeah, go ahead. There's a lot that has to fall together to, bring to, together. to, to come together within oneself, within oneself. into somebody to yeah. follow this path. I mean, yeah. all that has to come together. Yeah, yeah. All has to come together. In all, in all this, you know. Yeah. One by one. When, when you come to the first step, then you have second step from right before you. If you, don't, if you never come to the first step, you will never go to the second step. The path. Yeah. The path. You know, if okay. you put the one step forward, and then, then what is next is the second step, yeah. right? Right. It's that first step. Yeah, the first is the first step, and then the second step, third, fourth. So. Yeah. <coughs> but all this involves using your mind, and thinking. Yeah. And scrutiny. All using your mind. Scrutiny and yeah, and then practicing it. Practice. Yeah. Scrutiny is like something, it's also, how do you feel, you know, how do you understand scrutinizing? Um, 
really examine. look at it deeply, examine deeply. it, look at that <laughs> from mm-hmm. all angles. Yeah, scrutinize. yeah. Okay, scrutinize. So then, it the the Pali word as I as I remember is like padahat. No, not padahat. I'm sorry. Uh, Tulane. Tul. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, that means like you uh, think very, you think wisely, and you. Um, you measure yourself with wholesome things and unwholesome things, and you look at yourself and you see uh, how much unwholesome things still arise in you. You know how far, and and also how far wholesome things arise in you, and then you see oh unwholesome things, you know, still they come up in my mind. You see them. And it's still, you know, I don't have lots of wholesome things. I still, I haven't practiced this. It's still, I haven't gained or gotten this this wholesome states of uh, of my mind. So then, when you scrutinize that, when you think, when you look at yourself, then it helps you to strive. You know, then you see that, oh my goodness, still I have these unwholesome states in my mind, right? You you look at yourself, and then you see the unwholesome states that arise in your mind and then you you balance them you balance them how far unwholesome things comes and how far wholesome things come in you in my in myself in my mind then you see if it's some it's, it is completely a personal uh, practicing a per, it, it is completely depend depends uh, yeah it is completely dependent on you that you have to look at yourself and see um, how much wholesome things and unwholesome yeah. things you know how they process how you. they're arising arising in you, you as yeah happening. and then yeah when you see that that there are still there are unwholesome states these kind of unwholesome states and and also I haven't gotten this kind of wholesome states then it that uh, that push that pushes you to strive to let go of that because you have faith you have confidence in that uh, that you got already um, so that helps you to go forward because you understand oh still this is this is in me I should let go of this I should let go of this you know that's what that is how you think that's how you that's how uh, you tend to think because you tend to strive because of uh, scrutiny, scrutiny, scrutiny. Yeah, that's a little different than what I was thinking. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Did you get it? Yeah. Scrutiny. That's, that's what we did when we did the steps. The steps, yeah. When, 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 when we went through the steps, that's what we did. We scrutinized ourselves, ourselves yeah. for the yeah. first time in our lives. For the first time. Yeah. Instead of blaming everybody else, it's all his fault. <laughs> <laughs> Scrutinizing. Yeah. So we look at ourselves and we 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 measure how much unwholesome things are uh, coming to be yet, and how much wholesome things are coming to be, and how strong they are. So we have to be be mindful, aware of them, and look at ourselves and see they arise and pass. See the way, see the way they arise and pass away. See how they uh, play in our mind, and then they we, we tend to strive. <coughs> scrutinizing yeah so the fr- in the f- in the beginning uh the Buddha says uh, how you you know uh, how you discover the truth i mean the not in the beginning of that conversation in the middle we saw that uh, that he began to tell steps of uh, discovering truth so before that there were other stuff uh, which um, uh, the protecting the, the preserve you know what you call perceiving right preserving right preserve or perceiving I mean protecting not Protecting by preserving. Preserving, yeah. Preserving, right? Preserve, yes. 
Passive ou passivo? Preserve. Preserve. Yeah. Preserve. Yeah. Uh, it's here. Yeah, first he was talking about uh, the uh, yeah preservation mm -hmm. of truth. Yeah, preservation of truth. How does one preserve truth? So then uh, he began to tell. He began to. Uh, he began to uh, teach, ex explain the way we can preserve the truth. So if a person has faith, Bharadwaja, he preserves truth when he says, my faith is thus, but he doesn't yet come to the definite conclusion. Only this is true, anything else is wrong. You know, some people come to, some people, you know, they do have various kind of perspective and they say, this is right, this is the truth, anything else are wrong. This so lots of people. Exactly, lots of people. Lots, no, and lots and lots of people. Yeah, you can't tell that. If you tell that, you're not wise. You know why? Because you tell it with, based on your faith. But... Maybe based it on, is wrong. Based on what they believe. Yeah, exactly. Based it's only on, based on what they believe. If yeah. There's no wholesome or fact or yeah. grounds or, or logical reason. Yeah, that's it. what he explained in the beginning. Um, if a person has faith, Bharadwaja, he preserves truth when he says, My faith is thus. So this is, what, this is how they should say it. My faith is thus. Yeah. I believe this, but it doesn't mean that other things are wrong. And this is right. So, he, but he, he does not, he does not yet come to the definite conclusion. Only this is true. Right? There are five ways of gathering uh, knowledge. The first one is the faith. Based on faith, we gather knowledge. And the second one is the um, um, Yeah, here, here he says approves, but Sadha Ruchi, you know, the second one. Um, here he says, uh, yeah, like, like that's, how, that's what you approve, but the second, the, the, part, the meaning of the second one is, is like what you like. You know, this is what I like. Right, you are you are willing, you are you are will. And this is what I like. You are um, your willingness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Your willingness. That, that, that works. Yeah. Approve. Can we can we have that or two? But yeah, I will use willingness. Right. So I like this. So I, therefore, I tend to learn about it. So I accept things because I accept that why I like it. So it is just based on my my own uh, willingness, my own selections. So my my it, it is it 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 based it is based on my um, my choice. Like I I choose this. Why I liked it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So based on that, we tend to learn things. And that's the second way to gather uh, knowledge. And the third one is, I, you know, the I have heard this oral tradition. I have heard this. This is what I heard, so I believe this. Why? This is what I heard. That's why I believe this. So based on what we heard, you know, the true, because of the oral tradition, uh, we tend to learn things about what we heard. And the fifth, fourth one is the. Like uh, you come to a conclusion, um, you know, based on based on the pondering, you know, yeah, you 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 ponder on your view. Uh, you think. Uh, Mm. Well, that sounds good. That yeah, something <laughs> uh, was here. 
اخر بروتك يا اتس سمثينج يا يو كوند يو كم تو كونكلوجن باي بوندرينج اون سم سم كونكلوجن سم فيوز اند يو تيند تو ليرن ذات ذا فيفث ون از ذات ذات جوز ويز يور فيو تو so it 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 is it is same it is it's the same uh, thing it is same with your view so that's how you see it and it is also it also goes with it and then therefore you tend to learn about it because it it is it you goes agree with it you go i get that yeah yeah, yeah. it goes yeah you agree with it. Yeah. yeah you agree with it because that is how you see it so it it um, it goes with your view that's why you can agree with that right that's the fifth one uh the fourth one is the pondering uh, on con- conclusions akar parivithak you think oh if was this if this was like that or this should be like this or maybe that can you know that happened like that so this should happen like this that's the fourth one like you 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 ponder on some conclusion some some facts and then you come to a decision you come to some conclusion based on some facts that that maybe that might be right that might not be right too no oh, he's got to be this because he did that right? yeah that's yeah yeah so here he says it as uh, reason cog ah, yeah reason cog cogitation Oral traditions and recent cogitation. If he accepts a view as a result of pondering it, he perceives truth when he says. I think the fourth one is we can say the recent cogitation. Like you think deeply based on some reasons, and you come to an idea, and you accept. It. You come to a conclusion, and you accept it. The fifth one is the that uh, that 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 thing whatever it is it goes with your view the thing it jana can't be called it it goes with my view so so therefore i accept it i agree with it i like it and i learn it so i i have faith on it i have faith in it because of that those five things are the five things are the ways that people gather knowledge the people tend to gather knowledge tend to learn things but it is not the complete realization the true realization true knowledge is beyond these five ways i i taught these five things i remember so the true knowledge true realization is far away from this five things <laughs> you cannot have the true knowledge based on a faith just based on faith or uh, belief or um, you know the a belief it doesn't mean that is 100% right or 100% wrong so even though you learn it because of you believe it it doesn't mean that is the true knowledge or oh, the second one is that you like it you have you, you know willingness so i like it so even though you like it it doesn't nece- it doesn't necessarily mean that is right that is or, or that is wrong all it means is that you like it yeah just as <laughs> you like that's it all that's all mean yeah. so you learn it because you like it the third one you believe it because you have heard that i have i have heard like i have heard thus so that's why we learn it so it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that is true just because you heard that from your uh, from your tradition from your culture from your generation right and it can be true it cannot be true true you know but th- then it doesn't then it cannot be the true knowledge true understanding of the reality it, it cannot be the true realization so the fifth one that you come to conclusion you by um by true uh, reasoning cogitation 
reasoning cogitation. So you 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 cogitated cogitated, right? Yeah. yeah. Concocted. <laughs> <laughs> Not concocted, yeah. Cogitated or you thought um, you fabricated one something um, yeah, cogitated in your mind based on some reasons. So it then it doesn't it is also it, it, it also doesn't necessarily mean that it's completely right or wrong because you came to that idea with, you know by uh, cogitating some reasons this is what happened in the past so according to that fact that, 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 that according to that reason that should be this should be like this right? But you got to examine and you got to scrutinize and yeah you... yeah that, that is a way to, to discover the truth but we come to the people come to learn things and practice things based on some reasons but through the reasoning cogitation so then it doesn't necessarily mean that it's right or wrong it can be true it cannot it might not be true too the fifth one oh that goes with my view oh that's right i agree with it why right? it goes with my view so this is right then this is right. This is right. Everything is. Everything else is wrong. Why? Because this goes with my view. Not only my view, and also others' view too. So therefore, this is right. It doesn't necessarily mean that is right or wrong. So we gather knowledge based on that also, but it cannot be true knowledge. Right? Did you understand? Yes, yes. So these are the five ways that people know in all in the world yeah. they gather knowledge. It's false truth. Yes. The Buddha said monks and the so real the true knowledge is beyond these five ways. Got it. Okay. Right? I got it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got it. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah. So it's amazing. Yeah, exactly. All these, you know, those five ways of how people gain knowledge, but yeah, and then it stops there in in this world. That's where it stops. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And then they think I know something. Yeah, yeah. But what do they really know? They well, don't really yeah. know anything. Yeah, you know, what, what because it because what this guy thinks he knows and this guy thinks he knows. Yeah, they're both not. Yeah. Just, just, uh, just an argument. <laughs> it's an argument. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, then you know, everybody says, "No, I am right. No, you, you are wrong. No, I am right. right. You are wrong." And, and then we start shooting at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And we're <laughs> shooting bombs at each other. Yeah. What was the first thing we were taught in AA? Keep an open mind. Keep an open mind. That's right. <laughs> open. You know, that's the the other thing. You know, open your mind. Open the mind. Not to space. not to the way you see things, not to based on your greed, not to based on your anger, not to based on your delusion, not to based on your belief. If you want to open your mind, you cannot open your mind based on your belief. How? Yeah, it, it right? closes it. <laughs> you have closed your mind. <laughs> right? Yeah. You can't open your mind based on greed. How can you open your mind based on greed? Because you're stuck. Right? You're stuck in somewhere. So you greed, cannot greed open your mind. Greed is a disease. Greed and all the defilements. All the defilements. Yeah. yeah. That's why we have to follow it, follow the teachings of a person who was open-minded. <laughs> open-minded means, you know, you should have an ability to see the world Beyond, without, with with a mind, um, which hasn't anger, delusion, greed, jealousy, defilements, or whole, any whole unwholesome states. People that still think. They, so many people today just don't think anymore. They just react. Yeah, they just react. They, they don't do think. They're yeah. told and they react. And, and yeah. So. The five ways, the four, the the five ways is five ways. Those five ways are very important to know, and then we know, we know that it's not the true realization, true knowledge. So that is not the truth. So, no, so there is a way to gain 
truth. Uh, and then the Buddha was talking about discovering the truth. The first one was the uh, preservation of the truth, and then he was uh, telling, he was teaching the uh, discovering the truth. You know, the Buddha said, even though they um, they preserve the truth, yeah, in this way we describe the preservation of truth, but as yet there is no discovery of truth. You mean like I mean like you don't uh, say that this is right, this is wrong. Uh, based on those five things, five ways, then you say, "I this is what I believe." So then you don't say, "This is this is the this is the truth." Everything is everything else is wrong. You don't say that. You say you can say, "This is what I believe." This is what I heard. This is what I like. This is what my this is this is my view. This is what this is the conclusion that I came up with by pondering or by you know cogitation you know reasoning cogitation co cogitation and this is yeah this goes with my view this is why this is what my view so this is what i came so that's what that's how you talk about then in that way you perceive the truth you don't say that is wrong this is right so then the buddha talk, buddha the buddha said even though he preserves or they even though we perceive we we preserve the truth, uh, but we that is not the discovering of the truth. The preservation of truth is not the discovery uh, of the truth of truth. Is, is, it, is it more like preserving the ability to find the truth? Is, is that what we're saying here? No, in here the first you, you don't say this is the truth. You say this may be the truth, and, and then you can continue yeah. on. You don't. You don't say this may be truth. You say this is what I believe. This is what I heard. But you don't say this is completely right. This is this is the only thing which is right. This is completely wrong. You don't say that one. If you say that one, if I oh, say so, so, you're keeping an open mind again. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Like you know, you until I learn more. Until I learn more. Yeah. This you know, is good enough for now. Yeah, this is good enough for now. So that's you, where the striving comes in. Yeah, you believe. Because <laughs> that's coming up and it's got the striving. And exactly. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the discovery of the truth is then he, the uh, Chanki, asked Buddha um, about the discovery of the truth. And then he says, um, in what way, Master Gautam? In what way, Master Gautam? There is the preservation of truth. In that way, Master Gu Master Gautam, there is the preservation of the truth. In that way, one preserves the truth. In that way, we recognize the preservation of truth. But in that way, Master Gautam, is there the discovery of truth? In what way? Yeah, but in what way? In what way does one discover truth? We asked Master Gautam about the discovery of truth. So now he says about the discovery of the truth. Discovery of truth. Here, Bharadwaja, a monk may be living in dependence, living in dependence on some village or town. Then a householder or householder's son goes to him and investigates him in regard to three kinds of states. In regard to states based on greed, in regard to states based on hate, and in regard to states based on delusion, are there in this monk any states based on greed such that? So, you know, we read about it. So then he investigated how that monks um, uh, live, like, you know, is he uh, really greedy and angry, very aggressive, and he, does he have anger in his mind? And lust in his mind, greed in his mind, and when he make an investigation, he comes to realize that he doesn't have that. And also his dhamma, that what he's talking about is very deep, very profound, and only wise can be wise. Only the wise can understand that it is not um, easily. It is not easily to be understood. It is difficult 
uh, and then he when he make an investigation he has seen his he, he has seen that he is purified uh, from states based on greed and anger and delusion and after that <coughs> then he places faith in him now he gets faith that's why we need to understand that the Buddha is an Arahan the first quality of the Buddha the Buddha is an Arahan that means that the Buddha doesn't have love, greed, anger and delusion in his mind so he comes to, you know, he comes to understand that his mind is completely uh, free from greed, anger, delusion and then he gets faith in him he places faith in him yeah. The, the, when you say delusion, yeah. now, is that the delusion of the I self me? Of I self me. Yeah. Realized the realized the there's no me. The I. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There's no myself. There's no who I am. Yeah. Okay. Free from delusion. And uh, then you know when we understand that the Buddha is an arahant, we can place uh, our faith in him because he doesn't have such things, such, such unwholesome states. And then we tend to visit him. We tend to, we tend to go to him. And when we go to him, we have to associate him with respect, you know, respectfully. So in here we say uh, paying respectation, but um, it means that you associate, you know, if or you you only can you you can only you only can associate a monk if you go to him if you don't go to him you cannot associate him right it's pretty straightforward <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so if you go to him then you can associate him so you then how you should associate you should associate him with respect that's what it say, that's what it means so uh, it is called uh, yeah I don't remember the Pali word of that too but it's nice those are nice words and you know. we were used to you know I can remember the Sinhala name Sinhala words hmm. uh, so when you associate him respect with respectation and then he the teacher he tends to teach Dhamma to you then what you have to do is you have to give your, eye, your ears towards him you have to pay attention to that if you don't pay attention to that you can't listen to him right? so <laughs> how can you listen to him if you don't pay attention to him? and um, Yeah, filled with faith, he visits him and pays respect to him. And then we tend to visit him and see him and pay respect to him. And then uh, when we pay, having paid respect to him, he gives ear. So, because you know we pay respect, we, we associate monks res with respectation. So monks they tend to teach dharma to us. So then we have to pay attention. We have to give our ear. And then after that. Uh, you know we are able to learn Dhamma you know because we he we hear Dhamma we hear Dhamma and having heard the Dhamma we have to memorize it we have to keep them in our mind we have remembered Dhamma that we learn even these steps we have remembered them and what we should do after the after the uh, after that after you know uh, memorizing them like after you know if we can rem remember them, then we can examine about them. If we don't remember them, we are not able to think about it. We cannot think about them if we don't remember them. How can we think if we don't remember them, right? <laughs> so we have to remember them, we have to memorize them, to think about it, think about them, to examine. So we call it wise consideration. We think wisely. 
wise consideration we think wisely so when we uh, examine them when we think wisely we can see it we can understand it we can accept those teachings as a result of uh, pondering them examining them when you have accepted those teachings as a result of pondering them desire springs up so when you see that dhamma in you when you when you think wisely when you when you see it within you when you understand that within you you your desire comes up your desire comes up to do what to practice Yeah, when he when he has accepted the, those teachings as a result of following them, desire springs up. When desire has sprung up, he applies his will. He applies his will, his willingness. Having applied his will, uh, he scrutinizes. Then he thinks, you know. Now he looks at himself, and he sees. Uh, the unwholesome states that arise in his mind and also wholesome states which arise in himself and then he is able to and he tends to strive to let go of unwholesome things which have arisen in him in his mind and he tries to arouse unwholesome you know wholesome states wholesome states which hasn't arisen yet in his mind so that's what that's Uh, that's how striving come from this how striving come and after that uh, when he strive because of striving uh, he can yeah he realize he strives and resolutely striving he reali- he realizes with the body the supreme truth and sees it by penetrating it with wisdom now he sees it within himself now he sees the dhamma in himself he penetrates he penetrates the dhamma the reality the nature so now it is not based on belief it's not based on his uh, willingness just a willingness it's not based on a on oral tradition it's not based on uh, reasoning cogit cogitation or it's not based on what uh, how, what his view on his view now he sees it now he experiences the reality within himself now he see, he sees it and he knows it sees and knows mean the you know, big thing not the simple thing sees and knows it's a really big thing it's really deep thing so hard to see and know many people do think that it's so easy to see and know no it is the hardest thing of the world the hardest thing of the world is to see the reality and to know the reality that's the hardest thing and then Uh, in this way we describe the discovery of truth but as yet there is no final arrival at truth there is no final arrival at truth there is yet. one but yet there's okay. no final arrival a long truth. way to go <laughs> so now what is there is in that way master gotama there, there is discovery of truth in that way one dis- uh, one discovers truth in that way we recognize the discovery of truth but in what way must go to me is there the final arrival at truth so this this man this chunky was a very educated very uh, educated person you know he was 16 years old guy old young guy this chunky mm. but he was very talented well educated educated even even old man old brahman they honored him they respected him because of his talent because of his um, understanding in their dhamma in, in their teachings ved right and so now the buddha the buddha was getting him 
to the deepest Dhamma, to the, to the reality. For the final arrival at Tulth, Paradvaja lies in the reputation, development, the cultivation of those same things. Oh, what, now what does she do? We should cultivate, we should repeat again and again, you know, the same thing, we should develop, we should cultivate those same facts again and again, again and again, again and again. In this way, Bharadwaja, there is the final arrival at truth. In this way, one finally arrives at truth. In this way, we describe the final arrival at truth. So when you repeat them, when you practice them again and again, again and again, you come to the end of suffering by cutting off all the fetters that you have.